Hello world, welcome to the 17th video on my channel and the third video in my Zillow API playlist. Please subscribe if you want to watch me build this digital assistant from the ground up like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies. In the last video, I showed how I could iterate through the 554 homes in my neighborhood from this Excel that you see here and print the Zestimate to the console for each one. So in the console, it pulled, for example, this one, 611 Alder, and then gave me the Zestimate, and then it went through each one. In this video, I'm going to iterate through this same list, but this time I'm going to print the Zestimate and the square feet to the second and third column of this Excel sheet for every house in this Excel. So this is kind of cool to me because even though um, I bought, so I bought a new gaming laptop primarily to play Minecraft at a better uh, render distance, and uh, I haven't even activated Microsoft Office yet. So as you can see here, um, I can't do anything even if I enable editing because I have not activated this, so I can't make any changes to this. And so using the program I'm about to show you, it will edit this and I don't even have to open Excel. Okay, so this is the Excel, has the 554 homes in my neighborhood. So I'm going to close this. Okay, then we're going to run this code. So here we go. Okay, so what it's doing now is it's running and it is adding the Zestimate and the square foot to the to the Excel sheet. So I didn't have it open it because I don't want to see that. And I am timing this video, so I'm going to cut this uh, part out where I'm waiting for it to work and see how long it takes. Okay, and we're back. So if uh, it printed out to the console some errors, so some of the addresses the Zillow API does not like, um, I can see a spelling error in one of them. And then so I know that it worked or when it's done, I had it say, check that file, yo. Okay. And so it finished with an exit code of zero, which means it worked successfully. All right. And then once I see that check that file, yo, we can check that file. Okay, so we're going to open it up. Okay, like I said, I don't even have this activated yet, but still, now we see that each house on this Excel sheet has the price and the square feet. And if there was an error, it says error. So, there you go. And I don't even have Excel. I couldn't even edit this if I wanted to. I'm going to close that. All right. Now let's go through the code. If this is the first time you've seen one of my videos, just know that this isn't a tutorial. I quickly go down to the code. So if you're already familiar with programming, you can just see what I did and uh, either copy it like the rest of us programmers do or if you're just interested in how I did it. So this uh, function is called a neighborhood test. This is um, all in testing phase right now. So the location, you have to set up the name for where this uh, Excel sheet is. And so it's in my directory, so I don't have to list the file path. OK, then we open the workbook to read it. This was in my second video. We assign it the worksheet. And then we start off in column A. This is row uh, zero, column zero. And in programming, that's the first column, first row. OK, this has to deal with the last video where we're reading the Excel sheet. OK, so the new part in this video is right here where we're using something called um, XL, open PYXL, open Python Excel, open PYXL. OK, so it's in my import. And if you want to install it, you type pip install open pi XL. Okay, then you assign it a workbook. So you load the workbook from this location. 
and then you assign it the worksheet. I only have one worksheet in here, so it's just dot .active. Ignore these comments. All right, and before we get into the for loop, we have to keep track of the rows. I call it column count because I'm in the column, but we have to keep it. In OpenPyXL, it kind of ignores standard programming and starts with one. I did not know that, now I do. Okay, and then, so for I in range of sheet of the number of rows. So what we're doing is we're going through the Excel sheet starting with the first one and then we assign that first cell value in the first row of the first column the address then we add it to Bossier City Louisiana and now I get the address city this was in my second video ignore these comments okay then we do a try and accept so we can catch the errors okay then we use the API dot get search results we pass it the key so you have to go to Zillow API and get your own key, the address and city, which we created here, and the postal code, which is one of my global variables. And then I get the amount first from the dictionary. You can see how I did this in my second video. Then we get the square feet. This is the exact same, but using the get deep search results function of the Zillow API. Okay, now this is where the new code is, where the open pi excel so you use worksheet dot cell that's how you write it into it the column count so that's where we keep track of where we are in the excel sheet in the second column I want you to write the amount or it will write the amount same thing in the next one the column count is the row so it keeps track of it then in the third column we're writing the square feet then the column count is column count plus one. So when that's done, we pass the new column count. Now we're on row two, and it keeps doing that, and it iterates through all 554. If we get an error, I print out the error here in the console to let me know. Then we type in error into the second column, and then we want it to move on even if you get an error so it doesn't crash. So we keep the column count just like we did in the try. Okay. And then we save it using the workbook.save to that location. I'm thinking about keeping that how it is and saving it to a modified file. So I could do that. And then a print statement at the end of all the code. So I know it runs successfully and says, check that file, yo. That's when I know how to check that file, yo. So that's pretty cool, especially since I don't even have Excel activated. So in the next video of this series, I want to format each of those prices into dollars, the square feet into numbers, and then that way I can do some maths on it, right? Get the average price per square feet. I can do sum. I could do all of that. I could filter out those errors until I can learn how to fix those. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like the video if you want to support me. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell notification so you know when I uploaded the videos and so you can watch all of it. And then please share this with your friends, especially if you have real estate friends. All right. Goodbye, world.